In this video, I'm going to review Lesson 3A.2, Introduction to Scene Kit. Let's go ahead and get started and create a new Xcode project. We want to select the Augmented Reality app and choose Next. We're going to call this Scene Kit hyphen primitives. Make sure that under content technology, you've selected scene kit and choose next. Then we need a location. We'll just save this to our desktop. You remember we have to connect to a real device and you need to make sure you set this team to an existing team. If you're doing this on your own without a developer account, you can just use your name where it says personal and that allows you to develop directly to your device. So make sure you set that before you try to run the app. The other step we need to do, we're going to clean up a few things. We're going to delete, uh, we're going to create our own scene assets. So we want to delete these. So if I right click and delete and then move to trash, delete and move to trash. Now, this uh, Xcode just crashed on me and I don't know why, <laughs> but there's a bug. It seems to be a bug earlier when I was doing this. So now notice that the, the scenes, the assets are gone. Uh, earlier when I was putting this together, it crashed. It, it didn't crash and it just showed the items were still there. Anyway, something's going on. We're just going to work past it, ignore that. Nothing to see here. So once we have this, we want to add a new file. So I'm right clicking on the art scene assets and then clicking new file. And this presents me with a new scene file and I want to call this campus. Now that we have this new scene file, we need to reference it in code in order to load it. So if you go to the view controller, remember here in the view did load, we load our scene. We need to change this so that it loads our campus scene. All right, let's go back to our campus scene. In the book, it shows how to add nodes and elements to the screen programmatically. And I would encourage you to read that on your own, but uh, I'm going to demonstrate how to do this using uh, the scene graph editor and drag and drop and manipulating positions and things. So. Go ahead and read the book if you're interested in how to do it programmatically. We will be doing some more programmatic uh, development for AR in future videos, so we'll certainly cover a lot of things. All right, so with this scene, we need to place something in here that represents um, kind of the root node of what we're going to be doing. And the reason for that, if I click over here, here's my library object, objects library. and here are all the various elements that can go into a scene. Um, these are various things. Some of these represent visual elements like these primitives. Primitives are a term for basic 3D objects. A lot of uh, any 3D art software, design software, and or programming uh, Unity and others will reference primitives. And a primitive is just a preset object that you can then manipulate. You notice that you have planes, boxes, spheres, geospheres, all sorts of things that have various geometry. And that's what represents in the 3D space. So for our purposes, we want to create an empty node. This is a non-visual element. And we want to click and drag and add it to our scene graph. And you can rename it here by double clicking and we're going to call this campus. With this 3D uh, node, it's empty. There's no visual elements, but what we're going to do is add elements to it. And whenever we move this, everything connected to it will move at the same uh, relationship. So I'll demonstrate that here in a little bit later. Let's go back to the object library. And at this point, we want to add a box. So go ahead and click and drag a box and make sure it is a child of campus. Now, notice if I pull down, it's going to be next to it, which is not a child. But if I pull up, notice it's there. So now it's related to it. Everything I add within this relationship, if I move the position of campus, everything moves. 
Same with this parent-child relationship will come up quite a bit. All right, so we have a box. We can rename this box. You can either double click here to rename it, or if you come over here to the node inspector, we're gonna call this main building. And we wanna manipulate the size and position of it. So if we come here to the attributes editor, we wanna change the size, the width, set it to three. And then we have height and other things we can change. Uh, if we go to the materials editor, we can change the color. So here, um, obviously you got lots of different color palettes. Um, I like the crayons because it's easy to see all at once. Let's just go with uh, a kind of a dark reddish brown. Go ahead and close that. Now, while we're in our scene graph, it's kind of hard to see everything in position. If I click away from the object, I can click and drag and see a perspective and I can manipulate it there. I can also um, hold down the shift key and scroll and I can scroll forward and back to see where things are in relation to it. So let's take a look at this on the device and see what, what we're seeing. So I've got this connected to my iPhone XS Max and we'll go ahead and run it. Note that if you're running something built onto your device uh, in, in developer mode, it's gonna tell you you're gonna have to trust it. If you go to settings, general, it, it tells you right here, but you'll have to do that in order to get it to run properly on your device. So here I've got my device connected to my computer. Uh, remember you have to accept the camera permissions in order for it to work. Okay, so here we are now. The question is, where's my box? If I pull back, oh wait, here's my box. Hold on, hold on, where is it? Whoa, it's a big box. Okay, there's a problem. It's uh, way too big and it's in a position that is, uh, I'm basically, now I've gone through the box. It's too close to the viewer and it's too big. So we need to fix that. If I come back here, there's a couple of things you can do. Uh, if I select my main building, we have a couple of options to consider. You could change the physical size and manipulate these numbers a little bit. But what happens is when you start to change physical size of uh, objects and you have multiple objects, parent, child, like say if I when I add more uh, items on the screen that are related to this building, you don't want to be having to manipulate um, individual width and height. You want to set that as a standard and kind of follow a standard. And then what instead we want to manipulate the scale. So here we have the scale is set to one. Let's just set this to 0.5 and let's set this to 0.5 and this to 0.5. I'm just pressing 0.5 and then pressing the tab key. So now my box is a lot smaller. The other thing we need to do is move the position of the box so that it's relative to the origin of the campus, the center of the campus, it's, it's back a ways. And so I'm gonna say negative one. And now when I run this, I'll show you what happens. Now, notice my box is much, much more reasonable. I have some distance between myself and the box and I can see things. Awesome. Now let's add some more elements here to make this more interesting. Go to the object library and we want to select a plane, click and drag. And now I'm gonna child this plane to the main building. Notice again that it's within there, I wanna let go. The reason I'm doing this is because we've scaled the main building object. If I add a plane to my campus scene, it's not gonna be the same scale as the main building. But if I parent, if I child this plane to the main building, then it's gonna inherit its scale. So now when I manipulate this plane, I can set its physical size to, to some numbers that make sense, and then it'll automatically be the right scale and association with the building. Okay. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and with the plane selected, let's call this sidewalk. And we're gonna set its position. We want it to be a little bigger than the building. So we're gonna say 3.5 for a width and 1.5 for a height. Now, here's the problem. 
if I zoom in, what's going on? Well, my plane is set up uh, vertically. I want it to, 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 to lay flat horizontally. So to fix that, we select our sidewalk. And if I come over here to the node attributes, what I'm doing is I'm changing the rotation and it's referred to as the Euler. So in this case, I want to set this to 90, press return. Now my uh, sidewalk is laying horizontally because I've changed the angle. Now in order to change the position of it, so but now it's kind of splitting the building. I want it to be at the bottom of the building. Remember, the building is one unit high, whatever that unit represents is just one. And if I want to lower the position, I can say minus 0.5 for my Y. And now the sidewalk is at the bottom of the building. Awesome. Okay, now let's go ahead and add another object. Let's come over here. We want another plane and we're going to pair it to the main building. And we're going to call this grass. And guess what? We're going to change the size. We need to change the size to be what? Maybe five by two. And again, we've got a problem here. Let's change that. If I come back here and I set the Euler for the X rotation, I want to set it to 90. So now it's flat. And then I'm going to change this to negative 0.5. Okay. We need to set some colors. If I come back to my sidewalk, uh, let's go to the materials editor and let's change this color and let's go with a gray. Let's go with magnesium. And for grass, we need to set this a color. We're going to set this as green of some kind. How about clover? Ooh, that looks good. Okay. So now let's take a look. We've got grass and sidewalk. Okay. Notice what's happening. Watch this. Look at this. See this flickering? Okay, what's happening is we're, we're running into some depth fighting where both of these objects, these planes are at the same uh, position. And because of that, the renderer doesn't know which one takes priority. So there's a few ways to fix this, but one way is to change the depth of one of these planes. So we're going to select the grass and we're going to come over here to the attributes and sorry, the node. And we're going to change its position a little lower. So I'm going to say negative 0.501. So now it's a little lower and notice how it fixed it. Watch. See, look at that. Perfect. Okay. Let's add another object. Go to the library and scroll down and we want a uh, cylinder. Click and drag the cylinder and add it just to the building. And we're going to call this tree. Um, the tree is a little big and it's kind of in the middle of the building. So let's fix that. If I come over here to the attributes, what I'm looking at is I can change the radius and I can change the height. The radius, if I click and hold and drag my mouse, notice I can change the radius. And so I can make this into a smaller tree trunk. You can kind of manipulate that however you want. Now I'm going to come over here and grab these handles and I'm going to move my tree out onto the lawn. See that? And let's give this tree uh, we can change the height. You can, you can manipulate this however you want. I'm just going to leave it as is, but I'm going to go back to materials and let's give this a color and let's set this to mocha. Okay. Now we have a tree trunk, but now we need to the top of the tree. So let's go and click and let's add a tree top, which is a sphere. So click and drag the sphere. Now, I want this treetop to be associated with the tree. So I'm going to make it a child of the tree. Notice how it places it centered and it's, it's associated with the tree. The reason I do this is because if I move this tree, then all of its children will go with it. So I can move the tree after I put this treetop on it 
and it'll stay together. So I'm just going to call this tree top. And uh, let's change its size. Again, with here, with radius, I can click and drag and I can give myself a more natural tree. And then I can click this handle and pull it up. Look at that. There's our tree top. Ain't it beautiful? Uh, let's change the color. Let's go with spring. Awesome. All right, let's take a look on the device and see what we've created. Okay, here's our building. Here's our tree. Isn't that cool? I can kind of go up and down. I can look at, look at my building. Isn't that beautiful? So at this point uh, in the lesson, the, the last thing that's remaining is you can next add some lighting. So there's a couple things you can do. One thing that it references is a method that allows to turn on some kind of default lighting. And we do that if we go back to our view controller and we go to in the view did load and within here we can say scene view dot auto enable default lighting. That's what we want. We can set that to true. That's, that'll help kind of brighten things up a little bit, give some more definition across each object. Now the next, the best uh, thing is to really, uh, if you notice when we looked at our object library, there's a number of these lights. If I take one of these lights and I click and drag and I add it to, and I want to add it to my campus, notice that we've, we've got a lot of, we've got this node here that I can now manipulate. Now, the type of light influences um, how it behaves and interacts with the scene. And you'll need to experiment with this yourself to kind of see how to make this work for you. But with this is a directional light and notice I can move this around, but a directional light is the entire world. The light is moving in that one direction. I can manipulate this angle. So notice I can click and drag and make this angle. So now I have, I have the angle, but the intensity or, or the position doesn't change in a directional light. With this light selected, if I come over here to, um, let's see, what is it? The attributes. If I come to the attributes, I can select the type of light. There's a spotlight. Ooh, check that out. Look at that. That's pretty cool. I can change that. Let's look at this. Let's look at this here. The intensity is a little high. Whoops. Let's, let's go. There we go. Let's see what that looks like real quick. Ooh, hey, hey, look at that. That's pretty cool. So we can, we can manipulate the lighting. You can do all sorts of things. Awesome. So that's just a flavor of what can happen with scene kit, the types of things you can do to build your own scenes. We can, Take a look at the book. It'll talk through how to do this programmatically if you want to do it all within the view controller. So there's a lot of options and you can experiment. You can change these sizes of objects, dimensions. Um, just, just have fun. Learn by experimenting and changing values and seeing what happens. You're not going to break anything. You can just always undo it. And so hopefully that was helpful. Thanks for watching. Uh, I'm trying out this new process where I'm not using the, my face on the video because it's a lot faster for me to record videos without my face. Plus I only have to shower like once a month instead of every day. So it makes it easier. All right. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and like and tell your friends, neighbors, family, and enemies, and we'll talk to you later.